can't trust this country to tell the truth when it comes to what happens to our people, to black people. And of course, a country that does that creates these types of symbols. Of course it does. Protesters are challenging what statues say about the past and what they mean today. Almost every day, another one falls. Some by force, others by crane. Black lives matter! The history being made now questions whether certain symbols should stay standing at all. Thomas Jefferson wrote, all men are created equal. He also enslaved over 600 people. Edward Colston was a major English philanthropist. He built his fortune buying and selling human beings on a massive scale. Or Christopher Columbus and other colonial figures who many say represent violence and genocide against indigenous people. The symbols of white supremacy and the symbols of oppression are inextricably linked for many people to institutionalized bigotry in the 21st century. What people are in effect doing is recognizing that before we start to talk about instituting institutional reforms, we have to deal with the symbols of oppression. Monuments are just sort of symbols of this much broader discussion we're having about systemic racism and about white supremacy. I'm an African-American woman. Why do I have to pass a monument of Robert E. Lee, a person that fought to en enslave or to continue to enslave me and people that were like me? It's disrespectful at best. I'm a citizen of this country. I should not be exposed to that. And while the list of targets has expanded, the conversation in the U.S. has largely been around Confederate statues on public land. More than 100 Confederate statues have come down over the past five years. Still, 44% of people oppose removing them. Confederate monuments are important to Southerners. And that's because, from a Southern point of view, the history that has been taught in our schools is history from the victor's point of view. No, those monuments were to honor the memory of men who fought for their principles, for the principles of constitutional liberty, the principles on which this country was founded. When, when slanderous accusations is made against the South, they're made against us personally. It's a personal and a family insult. Some view the removal of these monuments as a threat to their culture and identity. It's all about um, shoving this down people's throats and, er and erasing um, the history of, of the white people. And some see Columbus as a symbol of Italian-American pride. The main argument used is we're erasing history if we remove these monuments. And the question you have to ask yourself is which history? Memory, in fact, is as much about forgetting as it is remembering. What we're really dealing with right now is the selection of memories chosen and who chose those memories. So when people refer to these monuments as Civil War monuments, I think we need to, you know, we need to be very clear about what these monuments, you know, when these monuments were erected and by which generation. They were not erected uh, by the generation uh, that survived the war. They were erected a generation later when many of the civil rights laws and civil rights progress that was made in the post-Civil War era uh, was beginning to be reversed. It parallels also the movement to legally disenfranchise black men, turn back the clock on the 15th Amendment, an increase in racial violence, the rise of Jim Crow and legal segregation. It's also a celebration of, of the return of, of white control and white supremacy. Another spike in Confederate monuments being installed in public places came during the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s. It was always done to, in a way, to intimidate black people and, and to get us to stand down and not push forward in terms of uh, seeking our civil and human rights. And while some feel their point of view is being drowned out. Why is it that Southerners have not the same right to be proud of our heritage as every other group in the world? People calling for removal say that thousands of monuments on public land in this country are actively harmful. A 2019 study found more than 1,700 monuments, roads, 
parks and schools named in honor of the Confederacy. Beginning in 2015, as the conversation around removing monuments and other symbols gathered steam, several state governments joined the effort to protect the monuments. Which is what we're dealing with now in Alabama and in Georgia and Tennessee and North Carolina and South Carolina. There's legislation that prevents them from being removed. In Virginia, that changed this spring. But it was wrong then, and it is wrong now. After decades of legal battles at the state and local level. We started to push for state law to be changed. In this last session, we were able to get uh, those laws changed and off the books. The statue Appomattox went up a little more than two decades after the Civil War ended to commemorate Alexandria's fallen Confederate soldiers. For a number of generations of particularly African Americans, this statue in a major prominent intersection downtown was frankly just a slap in the face. The United Daughters of the Confederacy, the same organization that installed it more than a century ago, took it down just weeks before the change in law took effect. The Daughters of the Confederacy, um, given our interesting relationship with them as a city, um, have not told us where they're putting it. In many cases, the issue is the person, but not always. The Emancipation Memorial in Washington, D.C., and the Freedmen's Memorial, a Boston replica, are also under fire. The original was financed by freed slaves. The Boston copy, gifted to the city by a wealthy abolitionist. For a lot of Black Bostonians, it doesn't really represent equality as much as it represents submissiveness and a white savior. Tori Bullock, a local artist, started a petition for its removal that now has thousands of signatures. Is that image of a black dude on his knees, does that make you feel powerful? Does that make you feel respected? Does that make you feel good? They could have had the best of intent, but if it's interpreted in, in such a way with today's understanding, we need to listen to that. In June, Theodore Roosevelt's great-grandson and the Natural History Museum in New York announced they will replace a statue of the 26th president of the United States because of its depiction of African Americans and Native Americans. But some New Yorkers didn't agree. I think it's really sad. I really do. And um, I think it's disappointing. And I don't find this offensive. And I mean, I just, they're marching with him. What happens to the Jefferson Memorial? They're going to level it, right? Washington, um, I mean, Washington had slaves too. And where are they going to put all this stuff? They're going to have a, they're going to have a museum of bad statues. Well, actually, museums could offer one answer. The Museum of the History of Spandau Zitadella displays fallen monuments from Germany's past, including ones put up by Nazis. Und hier haben wir eben für sozusagen toxische Denkmäler ja schon eine Version der Lösung gefunden. Und damit endet es ja eigentlich nicht. Also das heißt, wenn man sagt, ab ins Museum damit, ist es damit ja nicht getan, sondern wir stellen die Sachen hier ja aus, damit die Leute sich weiterhin damit auseinandersetzen können. 